Is your Speedo the biggest bullshitter on your entire instrument panel? Find out next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Now, this question, which I get rather a lot of, is in pidgin English, my favourite flavour of Elizabeth Regina II's native language. Everything tastes better with a splash of added pigeon. I think you'll agree. This episode, not actually sponsored by the new McPigeon Happy Meal. Fly into Mickey D's today and enjoy McPigeon your way. Beak and feathers, entirely optional. Here's the missive from Andrew P. Why have I noticed lately they speedos in cars are lying? In my mum's brand new X-Trail, her car seems to be doing six coons less per when the GPS says in my Audi it's less than three coons and my other auntie's X-Trail it's six coons again and my partner's RCZ5 coons Ah, is this so? Are manufacturers doing this on purpose? (laughs) Yes, Andrew, they are doing it on purpose because regulations. Let me explain and also apologise on behalf of the education system for failing you so appallingly. About 11 years ago, the essentially globally homogenised regulations for speedos in new cars changed. Essentially, they're not allowed to under-report your speed, so a speedo cannot display, say, 100 when your actual speed is 105. This is kind of a good idea because nobody wants to be pinged for speeding on our increasingly over-regulated roads packed to overflowing with overzealous police officers and private contractor assholes in camera vans all snapping away, deriving a steady tsunami of government quasi-tax revenue whitewashed with the bullshit premise of safety. Nobody wants that. So, on the 1st of July 2006, here in Australia, they updated the Speedo Compliance Regulation called ADR18. In the USA, it's likely to be the same regulation masquerading as FMVSS something, the kooky code for Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard. Different names for essentially the same thing. Most of the compliance regs are homogenised worldwide now. A stroke of homogeneous, perhaps. New ADR 18 says that speedos cannot indicate less than the true speed of the vehicle and over-indication accuracy is limited to a maximum of 10% plus four kilometres an hour, and this means that at a true speed of 100 k's an hour, the Speedo cannot be displaying 99 or less, but it could be displaying up to 114. If memory serves, this accuracy requirement only pertains for speeds above 40 k's an hour, and accuracy is unregulated below that, I think. Before the 1st of July 2006, the speedo accuracy was simply plus or minus 10%. So the true speed could be 100 and the indicated speed could be anything between 90 and 110, which is something to bear in mind if you own an older car. That critical rule rejig date only applies to our glorious former convict melanoma melting pot paradise. The changeover might be different in your fine nation should you be watching from a comparatively cultured or even civilised country. One of the upshots of the latest ADR18 is that you really cannot blame the manufacturer for committing a speeding offence because the speedo did not make you do it, did not even aid or abet. In fact, the speedo is probably slowing you down. The other upshot is that manufacturers target a suitably high overestimation in the 5 to 8 k's an hour range and that allows them some wriggle room on intrinsic speedo accuracy and differences in tyre sizes etc. So good for them. It's not really a conspiracy to slow us all down, it's a compliance issue. But what galls me is this. I want to drive on the freeway at the limit, right? For example, it's 300 k's door-to-door from my joint 
to Canberra, mostly freeway. If Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull shit calls me for an urgent consultation on running the nation, some thorny issue that resists resolution, which tie makes me look less of a Churchillian git, for example, I have no tolerance for dilly-dallying on these pressing matters of national security. If I drive at the 110 km per hour limit, the drive to save the nation will take me two hours and 44 minutes. And just like my hero Jack Bauer, I don't want to keep bullshit mountain waiting here. The PM needs my help to prevent Tygate. However, should I happen to be driving in a car with the least accurate but still compliant speedo, I'll be staring down at 110, but my actual speed over the ground will be just 96 k's an hour. Bastards. Transit time blown out to three hours and eight minutes. Nobody wants that. This means I'll be keeping bullshit six actual waiting for 24 minutes longer than absolutely necessary. I hate that. Also, back in the real world, that's not driving. It's just wasting your damn life, bored shitless on the freeway. And I have no wish to do that for one nanosecond longer than needs must. You could use GPS, but not integrated GPS from the car maker because that generally does not display speed. Presumably because manufacturers don't want to open the floodgate of complaints about speedo inaccuracy from indignant customers when they see two mutually irreconcilable but close readings on the same instrument panel. If you want to drive legally but at the maximum permitted speed, you can suck a GPS receiver to your windscreen. But remember not to burn your lips approaching the summer solstice here in Australia. Once sucked on enthusiastically, you might compare suck-on receiver's speed to that of the speedo and derive a correction factor. Or if you want to use the correct technical jargon, a fudge factor. A couple of caveats on doing this, of course. I'd be doing it on a flat level section of road because GPS accuracy is potentially compromised uphill or downhill. The system itself, the space component, is reasonably robust for the Z coordinate, but the receiver that you're using might not be paying that much attention to elevation in practice. I do it at a range of posted speeds too, because speedo error might not be constant across all the operating speeds in your car. Trap for young players there, I think. I'd also use a wide open road without overhanging trees because canyons and trees that occlude the sky can block the line of sight to multiple satellites and thus degrade suck on GPS units accuracy. And I'd also be driving at a nice constant speed for several seconds minimum to minimise the read errors that flow from uh, sampling rate errors inside the receiver. Receivers don't listen continuously. They listen, rest, listen, rest, repeat forever. Driving at a constant speed is a safe way to overcome sampling rate issues when there's a speed change in between readings. If you've ever been on the freeway in a 110 zone and you've blasted over a crest or around a curve and come face to arse with a highway patrol interceptor lying in wait and then visceral reaction, you look down there and you're aghast that the speedo is nudging 120 k's an hour and you're picturing exactly what happens next. How may I help you, officer? Uh-huh. Well, without wanting to appear confrontational, I respectfully decline to offer any statement in relation to this interview, and I choose to reserve my defence. Really? What do you mean, exactly, get out of the car, national security? And then you wonder why this doesn't actually happen. You know, the blues and twos never actually go on in this situation. Like a deleted scene from Mad Max, you know, the first one, before Mel Gibson emerged like a butterfly from the anti-Semitic nutbag cocoon. It's probably because your actual speed could have been as low as 105 
on a perfectly legal, compliant, modern speedo. And you thought you got away with it. Yes, I will. That's kind of it for me on this. I'm off for breakfast. McPigeon tata on toast. Leave the beak on, but hold the feathers, please. Breakfast of champions. You know, most important meal of the day, if you discount <laughs> curried cock for lunch or dinner. Subscribe right now, I dare you. Then I may inflict myself upon you again. And I think for, I speak for us both here when I say, I'd like that. I'm John Cadogan. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching.